This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV. We're in the Radisson Blue Hotel here in Cardiff ahead of tomorrow night's reloaded show. Me doing? and you, Coogie, romantic dinner for two. It's great to have you back. There's only one beer. Do you know what? It's great to have you back. Do you know what? Do you know you've, in the past, you've like half joked about how you know, you've cheated on me and you've, you know, you're with other promoters and that. Well, I'll tell you what, you've been interviewed by two different people on IFL TV. So how was that for you? You're increasing your staff, aren't you? James Helder and Dewey Powell. Well, James Helder, a lot, not really. A lot of people who saw the Dewey Powell interview said how refreshing it was that someone who actually knew about boxing interviewed me. I think that was a bit harsh. But do you know enough about boxing to be a boxing reporter? Probably not. Are you a boxing reporter or are you an entertainment reporter? But we have to I'm not mix. If we can get that balance between boxing knowledge and entertainment... But that's why I think my interviews mix. are. I don't claim to be the most knowledgeable person about boxing I've ever had. No. But I know how to pull off an interview. And do you? you? Even know. if you may say so yourself. Well, you know I do. You are proper booking yourself these days. I've got to book myself because uh, no one else does. True, very true. Um, first show back yeah. for Spire tomorrow. Um, headlined by Lee Selby against Monroe. Let's ask you a question about Lee Selby. Do you think he was uh, unfairly criticised in his last two performances? Uh, no, because I think uh, you know the way that um, we've put him on a pedestal and a platform as the fighter that we believe he is, as the Welsh Mayweather, I know that's tongue in cheek, but you know, etc., etc. He's expected to be sensational every time he fights, and he wasn't against uh, Walsh. He was he was uh, decent against Simeon, but that was a tough fight. You know, I think the kid was like 16 and 0, um, number four in the WBC, and Selby still still learning. Um, I think the Walsh fight was a mixture of probably too many fights in in too short a period. Um, like, if you look at it, he boxed Martin Lindsay in February, he boxed in April in Blackpool for the Commonwealth title, he boxed in July in Hull against Simeon, and he boxed in October at the O2. Uh, four fights, three of those were, were tough 12 rounders, so he needed a rest, and he's not the kind of fighter that likes a rest, but I had to tell him to take one, and I think he's going to work to his advantage, and I think you're going to see a great Lee Selby tomorrow night. I mean, he's got the whole world in front of him, you know, he's got a sellout arena, you know, just up the road for his, from his hometown. He's headlining a show on Sky Sports. This is such a great opportunity for Lee Selby, but also a lot of pressure because he has to look sensational uh, against Rendell Monroe, you know, and, and anything else is he, probably slightly disappointing, bearing in mind the platform that he's on. Mm. What kind of Rendell Monroe are you expecting tomorrow? I'm actually expecting a really good Rendell Monroe. I think, you know, he's talked about his problems at, at Super Bantamweight, making the weight as he's got older. As always, he looks in great shape, he's very experienced, he fancies a job, um, but ultimately I think Selby will be too good for him. I think it's a perfect test for the European title and it's, it's, a, it's a good domestic fight, um, you know, on, on a great card. Hmm. Uh, watching ringside yesterday and uh, Gavin Reed said some interesting things that, you know, if he doesn't beat Buckland tomorrow, that he will more than likely call it a day, is that how you see it yeah, as well? I think so. And, I'd never, you know, I'd never tell a fighter to call it a day because ultimately it's their decision. But if they want my advice, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give it. And my advice, if it didn't work out for him tomorrow night, was to retire. He's been a world champion. He's been British, European champion. Um, and I don't think he, if he can't beat these kind of people, I don't think he wants to stay in the game. He's had a great career. He's had a nice few quid. He's comfortable. He's got a few businesses. So he doesn't need the money. So he's in it to win titles and perform. And if he's not, then I don't think he'll want to be in the game, you know, as much as he loves it. Um, but I feel he'll, be, he'll beat Buckman tomorrow. I think he's done the weight probably better than ever. He looks great. But again, sometimes you just don't have it anymore. And you don't know that till you get in the ring. Mm. Um, but what you're going to see in Buckland is someone with plenty of game, plenty of arsehole, and uh, someone that's going to come at him for 12 rounds. I think it's going to be a brilliant fight. From winning a world title to fighting, fighting for a world title against... Brona, more or less, this time last year. Do you think he's actually motivated to come back down to the domestic level? I think you'll find out tomorrow night. It's all very well saying you are. It's a bit like, you know, when Barker fought Stern, 
you know, we had the camp and everyone was buzzing and you know, Darren was saying the right things and everyone you know, felt like it was going to be a great night and then when you reflect on it after, like Darren will tell you now, you know, maybe something was missing from me after the Gill fight, I don't know, you know, sometimes you lose something from within and maybe Gavin Reese has lost that, maybe he's more determined than ever, but that's the great thing, we just don't know and that's what makes it such an exciting fight. Mm. Anthony Joshua in his uh, fourth professional outing should have been really sick, shouldn't it? I mean, he missed out on a couple of fights mm. last year, back in the last year due to injury. But Dorian Darch will definitely be his toughest test to date, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the great thing about this fight is Anthony's coming into a city where he's fighting someone from Cardiff who sold nearly 300 tickets, uh, who will be cheered on. Ultimately, Dart should be overmatched, but you know what you're going to get with Dorian Darch he's going to come and give it a right go. So hopefully at times he'll back Anthony up and give him a new experience and put him under pressure. But the thing is with Anthony Joshua is I've never seen a more exciting heavyweight at this stage in his career. You know, I believe he's going to be a future heavyweight champion in the world. I think he's got it all. Um, and not being funny, Coogan, have you ever seen a man who attracts women like Anthony Joshua? Unbelievable. I mean, we went for Nando's, you, me and him today. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I thought I had game, right? This man... I, I'm not being funny. I mean, it's yeah, I know. just like I know. something I've never ever seen. They look at I mean, him like he's not real. Killer, lady killer. Yeah. You know, um, and he's going to be a massive star, Anthony Joshua. If you're out of him, you're really just the wingman. Yeah, wingman. You? Yeah, and you're, you're working on scraps. Um, but <laughs> listen, he's got it all, you know. And and I think he's dedicated. I think that's the difference. Is you know, if he was arrogant, if he if he liked the party life, if he was, you know, if he wasn't motivated, I'd, I'd have concerns. But Everything is there, for, you know. I mean, I'm so excited about Anthony Joshua, and the country should be because we've got a real chance here to have a future heavyweight champion in the world. I'm not talking about you know the last couple of years where we've got a couple of British heavyweights who can challenge for world titles. I'm talking about we've finally got a heavyweight who can dominate the division, right? And we haven't had that since Lennox Lewis, right? And I'm telling you now, we've got the perfect opportunity in Anthony Joshua, and it's all of our responsibilities responsibilities to make sure he gets them. Do you know what someone uh, wrote to him on Twitter the other day and called him arrogant? I think it got to him a little bit and I've just thought to myself... You couldn't find a less arrogant Yeah, I know, that's what I tweeted I mean, back. He's got time that. for everyone, you know, I mean... Putting him on these shows, we see the response from the ticket sales and the interest from the media of inboxing. You've got to remember, this is a guy who won gold for Great Britain on BBC. He's a massive name. And you see it, Coo, when we're walking in town centres, people are coming up to him saying hello. You know, you don't get that for your average boxer. You know, he's a massive star already, but he's humble. You know, he knows where he's come from and he knows where he wants to go. And, um, you know, you, you, you'd be, you, you'd be uh, far, far fetched to find a, a nicer guy. But he's got that nasty streak, and that's what I like, you know. Mm. Uh, just a quick word on Chris Jenkins, who's got a, a shot at the WBC international title. So that could put him on the ladder yeah, somewhere. Great yeah, great chance. I mean, he's fighting a Frenchman who's very experienced, tough guy. I mean, he's ever been stopped. A uh, chance for a, a high WBC ranking. You know, we're, we're investing in the light welterweight division. Obviously, we've got um, Darren Hamilton fighting uh, Curtis Woodhouse for the British title. Ricky Boylan, he's on the scene. Tyler Goodjohn fighting for the English title. So, you know, we've got a lot of good fighters at light welterweight. And Jenkins has got a chance to, to put in an impressive sweat. Probably come a little bit early for him to be honest with you, the fight and the belt, it was available and the, the match was made and uh, it's a great chance for him. Mm. Right, moving on, obviously uh, while I was in America I was still caught up in this old Fox and Groves drama that's been going on. Uh, he was on ringside yesterday and you said that obviously we know that George had contested the 85-15 the split which has now failed in George's, for George. That has failed, is that correct? Yes, correct, yeah. Yeah. So, what, what's left to do now? Well, I mean, that's the split if it goes to purse bid. So, it's, that's always a guider. You know, the last fight was made at 85-15, but the deal for the fight wasn't 85-15. So, um, that's just in a purse bid scenario. It makes it a lot more difficult for Groves to get the split that he wants, um, because obviously, that's, that's like I say, it's, that's the guide for the split. But... Um, I don't know, mate. I mean, Groves wants too much. Froch wants 
Groves to have too little. If we can meet somewhere in the middle, we'll be okay. Um, on February the 4th or 5th, if we haven't reached the deal, it'll go to purse bids 30 days after. Um, if it goes to purse bids at 85.15, I'm very difficult to beat. If someone wants to beat us, give Froch you nearly double figure millions, then listen, great. Is it um, likely though, if you are to work out a deal before it goes to purse bids with you, Cole and George, that you can work a deal out where George is getting, going to get a better split than 85-15. Oh yeah, he will. Yeah. Just because that's the split, that's the split if it goes to purse bids. Yeah. That's not, doesn't mean that I'm going to offer, you know, and he's already been offered, well, you know, much, much better than 85-15. So, um, but he, he's got his, you know, a number that he believes is his value in the fight. And, you know, he, he has got a lot of value in this fight. You know, he's talked it up very well. He's going to sell a lot of pay-per-view buyers. Um, but obviously Froch is in his 11th or 12th world title fight. He feels that he should have the lion's share of it, you know, which is true. And it's very difficult, mate. You know, you're different dealing with two stubborn individuals, two great fighters, two egos, two people who can't stand each other, two people who are direct messaging each other on Twitter, telling each are other they? they're going to knock each other out. Are they really? Yeah. And, uh, you know... It's, but it is what it is, as you always say. It is a humdinger of a fight. Can, it is a massive fight. Can fun. you clear something up? Go on. Um, the I'll other, clear anything up. Yeah, I know. Sky wrote on their Twitter the other day mm. that the fight uh, had to be done for, within 90 days. Is that the case, or is it could be made within 90 days? Or, uh, within 90 or, days of the purse bid. So, but generally, you know, if you reach an agreement with the fighter, I mean, It'd be very difficult for a fight of that magnitude to happen in that time frame. So what would happen is I'd agree a deal with George. We'd both write to the IBF and say, actually, uh, you know, that's not, you know, this is the proposed date. We need time. It's a pay-per-view fight. It's a stadium fight. Got to promote the fight properly. Right. Both fighters are in agreement, and you wouldn't have a problem, you know. Or you know, one fighter <coughs> might have slight injury going into a camp you ask for an extension there's all kind of, I mean, that's not that's not a problem in the slightest the problem is agreeing the deal um, so I'm working on a few things over the weekend spoke to both fighters five times six times each yesterday you know uh, working on a few things over the weekend hopefully meet up on Monday try and get it done so can we expect an announcement next week end of next no. week Maybe, maybe. I think just when we get it done doesn't mean we'll necessarily make an announcement straight away. Um, we've got to move quickly. You know, we're looking at the end of May. There's a lot of work to be done. You know, there's major stadiums to decide which one to go to. There's seating plans to be done. There's logistics to be put in place. But what you've mentioned Wembley Stadium. Is that is that what you're still? There's a game on the Friday night. Right. Uh, an England game. Wembley are happy, and they think we can get get it all set up overnight. I don't think Sky are too happy with that, you know, time frame. But you now we're talking to Emirates, we're talking to Old Trafford, we're talking Emirates. to Man City. We're talking, you know, Twickenham has been mentioned, Wembley, obviously, City Ground. Um, but you know, at, at the same time, I've got to look at all Carl's options, and the Chavez fight is very live. And actually, another fight creeped into the uh, the woodwork, which we looked at before, and you know, I've been talking to HBO about that one tonight as well. Oh. So. Uh, Gennady Golovkin. It's a, it's a fight that I, as a fan, I mean, that for me is boxing porn, Froch v Golovkin, you know? And uh, I spoke to Carl about it the other day, and he, he likes the fight. Um, so I've, I've spoken briefly to Tom Loeffler and the, and the team at Golovkin's team, and I spoke to HBO tonight, and they, they like it. And, you know, if, if we can't get there with Chavez, if we don't go down the Groves route, then I would like Carl to fight Chavez. But, you know, that's a very complicated deal with, again, a lot of egos, it's a split issue. Um, and Golovkin's a lot easier to make because it's a different kind of structure to that deal. So, you know, there was a few um, interesting discussions with HBO tonight regarding Golovkin and, I, I, you know, from the get-go, but but don't get me wrong, Groves' fight is still a massive favourite to happen. But could the but Chavez or Golovkin be a, a second fight for Cole this year? Could could Golovkin yeah. or Chavez yeah, that could be, be a yeah, second after, fight after Groves? Yeah, I mean, Cole would have to beat Groves first. You know, yeah. it's, 
tough fight. Yeah, if he was to win, obviously. But my job as a promoter is to cover all options, and you know, if we can't agree a deal with Groves, maybe we look elsewhere. But I think I'd, I've said from the start, I think we will. You know, the, the 85 55 has kind of made it easier and more difficult because. 85 15. 85 15, because it should make George accept our numbers that we've been banding about but at the same time I think he's got his back up so it's made him go no I actually want what I've always said I wanted do you know what I mean mm. so I don't know um, can I ask you a question not relating to any of your fighters yes you can ask me any question you want um, we're waiting the announcement of uh, Mayweather Khan yeah. which is yeah. imminent we think um, will that be on Sky? Um, I have no idea whatsoever, to be honest with you. I don't think it's been discussed. Uh, if it's in May and we get Frotch Groves done, then the answer is no, probably. Because I don't think they'd have two pay-per-views. I think Golden Boy and Khan would insist that's a pay-per-view fight. Uh, so, on the basis that I believe Crotch Groves will happen. The answer is probably no. And I understand, as I understand it, Khan's got one fight left with Box Nation. I think he's done a three-fight deal. Mm. So I'm presuming it'll be on there. I, I don't know how the dynamics will work because obviously it's, a, it's not a standard rights fee fight. Yeah. It's a it's a pay-per-view fight. So someone told me they've got plans for pay-per-view on Box Nation. I don't know if that's rubbish or, but yeah. maybe that's an option for them. I don't know. Well, I just wondering. I mean, I'm presuming that Khan Mayweather will happen. I mean, I. I I keep telling it's. I keep hearing it's about to be announced, and I've heard it was done months ago. But I don't know. Mm. So I saw Stephen Espinosa. Hey, do you follow Stephen Espinosa on Twitter? I interviewed him. Did you? It's quite. Yeah. I mean, he don't he don't hold back on Twitter. It's no. quite. You know. Uh, but he's seen. He, he's adamant it's not been done yet. I mean, he might have said the same thing to you. No, I asked him, and he just you know, give me the corporate answer. Corporate answer, indeed. Um, any news on? Obviously, we know Kel Brooks fighting in Hull. No, he's not. He's fighting in Liverpool. Rewind. They were right. You didn't know anything about boxing. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know Kel Brook's fighting on uh, Mersey Beat. Good poster that was. You like that, don't I you? I did, yeah, I did. I was at you. I like that That's poster. Yeah. Um, look. Uh, any idea of opponent and any news on his IBF situation? No, he has to fight Porter before, I don't know, June or something. The IBF have written a letter to say that neither fighter can fight after April the 10th or 11th because um, they have to fight each other. So Porter will probably fight before then and Kel will as well. Kel, look, I'm not going to lie to you, Kel will be in a 10 rounder against a fairly decent opponent to gear him up for Porter. He's obviously not going to fight people tweeting today. Ortiz, Colazzo, Thurman. I mean, like, he's got a world title fight. Like, probably shouldn't even be boxing but I want to get him out and so it'll be a routine fight. Just, ten rounder? Yeah, ten rounder. Um, gearing up. Um, what, what's the situation about Porter and Alexander rematches? No that? idea. I'm presuming Alexander's got a rematch course. It was a voluntary defence. How's so. that going to work if they can't fight after anyone else after the ten? Well, because maybe Alexander will fight Porter now. Okay. No? No, okay. I mean, it's just a stinking fight, isn't it? Mm. Oh, so, so there's a few things to be sorted out before. All I can tell you is Brook will fight for the world title before the end of June. Right. So, you know, what they do, they do, and what we do, we do. And then we negotiate, you know, in uh, April. So, um, no, nothing can get in the way of Kel Brook's shot. So, Carl Frampton which has been announced that he's in a WBC final eliminator uh, April yeah. the 4th yeah. Friday night in yeah. uh, Belfast um, so I'm assuming that he will become mandatory to Leo Santa Cruz yeah it's weird because Leo Santa Cruz is fighting his mandatory Mahalis which is on the Angulo yeah, and in, Canelo in Bill. March in March the 8th so he's not going to have another mandatory till 2014. So does that uh, mean Frampton will have to wait? Uh, 2014. Uh, yeah. 
So I don't know. I mean, I thought that it's not my business, but if I was them, I would have thought he was offered an IBF eliminator. It was Kiko Martinez's manager, which was due in September, and they wouldn't have been able to escape that. So I would have gone down that route, but it's none of my business, really. I mean, but they, they um, Quid was on um, ringside yesterday, and they showed a little snippet of Carl Frampton sort of having a little dig about him, his chin, and a few other things. Um, again, are we just moving further away from this fight? Uh, Quig and Frampton? No, I mean, the truth of the matter is, is I made, I'm going over old ground again, I made Frampton a huge offer, didn't really hear back, then I made him an improved one, Barry Moody can come back to me, and said, uh, thanks for the email, let's talk. Um, it was, I think it was a couple of days before the Barker fight, so I'm going away for Barker, and he said he's going away to watch Kiko Martinez. And I said, look, we'll, we'll reconvene. Um, in January, they were made an offer to Kiko Martinez, $400,000, something like that. We made Kiko Martinez an offer, $350,000, something like that. And we didn't talk. And then Carl said, I never called them back when everyone's phone. Well, like, we're Quig's the world champ. Like, if they really want the fight, I've made them the offer. So it's not up to me to keep chasing, chasing. I mean, but there's a lot of politics. They've got a contract with Box Nation. As I understand it, they can't fight on Sky. So they can't really take the fight anyway. Mm. Maybe wrong, but that's how I understand it. So I don't think that fight's going to happen anytime soon. I think eventually it will. Um, what about Quigg and Martinez? Yeah, they've, I mean, they've indicated they want the fight after. And now that Frampton's not going to fight Martinez, I think there's a real strong chance that Quigg will go and fight and pick up two belts. Mm. So hopefully that'll work out all right. Um, what can you say? Two two great fighters, you know. Uh, Carl Frampton is a very talented fighter. Scott Quigg is a brilliant fighter, world champion. So hopefully, you know, these domestic fights, I want to make. You know, I've seen from the show this Saturday what it delivers, even like to a potentially a lesser scale. You know, uh, Woodhouse against Hamilton. McDonald against Wood. We know how, how well they sell. I want to make um, Quick Frames and I want to make Cleverly against Bellew. You know, I think that's a great fight. It's gets people talking. Two characters, great press conferences, fireworks. You know. When's the last time two British fighters fought at one weight and then rematched at a different weight? It's a great question. And the answer is Chris Eubank, Nigel Wynn. I believe. We'll have to check the stats. Right. If I'm right, they fought for the middleweight title. Yeah. If they rematch the super middleweight title. Yeah. Get in there. Oh, well done. I didn't think he was going to add that. I didn't know you the didn't answer know, to that. You don't know anything about boxing. I don't know anything about boxing. So, you're just a geezer who used to work... I mean, like, I don't know what you used to do, actually. but And then you thought, I don't go around some boxing shows. And then you got found, your, found your way into this. Yeah, that, that's that's how it happened, dude. Pretty much. That's how it happened. But you can't, you know. It's only I've never really since, since that person tweet tweeted me. I've never really realised that you actually don't know anything about boxing. Hmm. What is it you think I don't know? Well, I don't what is really it you know think, what's going on? No, I mean, what is it you think I need to know? It's not as if you're a boxing nerd, like you know, an early setback or something like that. I mean, you're not like you don't study records and. Up all night reading boxing blogs and you know. How, I mean? how do you know that? What? How do you know that? Oh, because you're either trying to be some bird's best friend, right? Eating, knocking one out, or no, that's those three. Those three. See, this shows how little you know me. Well, well I know you're not up because when you're not doing one of those three things, you're uploading videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you ain't got time to. I know you don't read or study. How do you know? Because you don't. don't. How do you know? Because I know. But how, no, you don't know that at all. You don't know that at all. Um, I'm a bit offended by all this, by the way. I wouldn't be offended. A little bit offended. It's like me basically saying. I've blagged it as a boxing word. You have done that. That's not. I that, just got. I just got. That's not up for some, debate. Some people, people, sometimes people tweet me again. How did you get into boxing? And I think and they're taking the piss. 
what do you that's up like me what do you really know about promoting nothing she picked up as I went along touche we can both answer the question though. we're fucking good at it son aren't we listen there's nothing I don't ask you it's true you ask me the best question ok I ask you the best question so my job as a reporter is not necessarily you're too... a reporter what you are a reporter yeah I'm not like a historian, I'm not like a Spencer That's Fear right. or a Bob, Bob Mead. But I, I don't need to be. I don't need to know, like, Jack Johnson's penis size. 12 inches. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, did I know like I was away, obviously, for 10 days? Yeah, what were you doing? Holiday. Looked really nice. Holiday. Started thinking about California a lot lately. I think we're going to set up a match in boxing in the US. Yeah? Get oldly to spearhead it. Sorry? <laughs> Listen, oldly was all right. Oldly said that my old man calls the shots. Yeah, he did. But, um, did you, you notice it when I'm not here, didn't you? I'm not just, I'm just saying... Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, actually, we were supposed to have the Liverpool press conference on Wednesday, but I changed it to next Tuesday. Not solely because of you, but... That was one of the reasons. I thought, oh, but Coogan will be back then. Because, you know, I mean, listen, you get a lot of views, you get a lot of hits, and we're selling out all the shows at the moment. And you might be a part of that. So... All right for someone who doesn't know fuck all that much. True. Do you know what it is, right? I'm being honest now. That hurt you, didn't it? No, it doesn't hurt me, because I've never claimed to be like a Spencer or a Bud, but I do follow boxing probably more than what you think I do. I, I believe you follow boxing, but, you, you know... But because I'm not a boxer, I know you are. I don't think, I don't think that's the case. I just think no, no, I'm not. No, you don't live it. You don't. It's not like you like like Spencer Fearon and those kind of people. But me, they all that in their spare time, all they'll do is like study boxing. Yeah, I don't do that. No, 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 you don't do that. No, I don't do that. I know you don't do that. But I, 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 I am up to date with what's I relevant. I believe you're up to date, especially what goes on in your camp. Yeah. Another camp. You're a bit of an insider, aren't you? What? Bit of an insider, don't you, into the matchroom camp? Do you say you're a part of the team? Mm. Do you feel like your team matchroom? No, do you know why I'm not part of the team? Why? Because your whole team just went to dinner, right? I didn't. Oh, well, I didn't go. Well, you didn't go because you ain't angry. But your whole team went to dinner, and I was just sitting there on the couch with my laptop, like a prick. And like yeah, but that's because like... I weren't there. If I was there, you would have been eating. But you travelled up with them. I mean, you, you travelled everywhere oh. with the team. I think you, you feel like your team matchroom. I'm very grateful for everything you've done. I'm not asking you to be grateful, I'm just saying. You make me feel part of the team. Well, I'm not you're a part of the team. You're part of the team. You're part of our success. And I don't, be, I don't believe we'd be as successful without you. So therefore, you're important. Is that a Saki comment? No. Right? I, I believe you're part, a big part of our success. Yeah. Your success? Don't start asking for done. Not my success. Because it's not me, it's Matra. It's the team. No, but we sort of started when you were a rookie. And literally, you had, I remember when you first started Twitter and you was like, get me to 3,000 followers. Right. It's mad how many followers I've got, but I think, because people know that I'm going to give them the news, and when, you know, when it breaks. And I think because I, you know, I tend to, I try to as much as possible, tell it how it is. But all the stuff that I'm telling you about Fox Grove, you, like, that's just, I'm, I'm going into too much detail, really. Well, even the phone call the other day where you broke off, yeah, phone no. call when and well, that was dealt with the you de- said you said oh what's that in Frotch Grove and literally my phone went and it was the IBF saying you know we called a rematch so I'm like you went Ed I went call you back and then we, then we started again so alright alright well listen we'll uh, look forward to you're some gonna, more show you're going to uh, talk to Joshua now aren't you I'm going to go and do a bit with Joshua actually I've got a few texts on my uh, phone from yeah. my phone so it's probably he loves it, doesn't he? He loves it I feel none of it, doesn't he? He does. Yes. Everyone gets good feedback from him, you see. Alright, we'll leave it there. Have you got anything else to say? No, no, just uh, keep supporting boxing. You know, I think people are realising what a great sport it is. I think you're going to see the shows turned up a notch in 2014. It's about the sport, it's about the night out, it's about the experience. Um, we want to make people at home and in the arena itself have a great time. Uh, more music, more lights, greater fights, longer nights. 
more birds. Alright. This is uh, one rookie reporter to... Rookie promoter. Rookie promoter. I'm still a rookie pitches. promoter. What? I'm still a rookie promoter, isn't it? Yeah. I've only been a promoter for two years. How long? Was it April 2011? What? Not oh. even two years. When was Barker Spider? That was my first actual promotion. Was that 2010 or 11? Uh, 2011. No, 11. Yeah. 11. So I haven't even done two years. Hmm. Well, good luck anyway. Thank you. Who knows if I make three? Who knows if I'll make four? Maybe I'll bow out at the top. Yeah? You never know, do you? What would be the pinnacle fight? Frotch goes two. Maybe I'll retire after Frotch goes two. Hmm. It's a lot of hassle. It's a lot of hassle. I love it. I love it in a minute. But you know, one day you might wake up and go, it's time to rule another sport. Hmm. Golf. Nah. You used to do you golf, didn't you? It. I used to do golf, but you know what it is? You've got to love. I'm a salesman, right? You've got to love what you're selling. Even if you're selling double glazing, you've got to believe it's the best fucking double glazing out there. Because when you're telling people how great this double glazing is, and I used to sell double glazing when I was 16, right? If you don't believe in that double glazing, you ain't going to sell it. And if okay. you don't believe in the sport that you're selling, you've got no chance. People come to our events, people believe what I say because I'm so passionate about boxing. Do you know what I mean? Like, what are you passionate about? Arsenal. What else? What do you, what do you love? I don't know. Cakes. No, I don't eat cakes. No. When have you ever seen me eat a cake? Oh, I don't get touchy. No, no, I'm just saying, you just try and palm me off some <laughs> fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Roly, let's, let's uh, wrap it up then. Alright. Okay. No, but this is what I, I yeah, do but, this five, no, five days a week. This, I'm you? passionate like, you, about this. You're selling something. Look, everyone's out on a Friday night in Cardiff trying to get a bit of crumpet. I'm here. What am I doing? I'm, I'm not out getting crumpet. No, exactly. But you're doing your bit for me and I'm doing my bit for you. See that. Coogan Cassius, Eddie Hearn, IFL TV. Eddie's getting on it.